So we have one more thing that we need to discuss with inverse functions. We've been talking about what the graphs of these look like, and we've been double checking the graph of inverse functions by graphing them on the calculator once we already have the inverse function defined. But what happens if it doesn't define a function or define an inverse function, and it wants us just to come up with a graph of the inverse function? And that's what we're going to be doing here. So here we have given two examples of f of x, and our job is to graph the inverse of these. So that's our goal. Sketch the inverse function of these. And these graphs are the original graphs. So these are defined as f of x. Our job is to come up with f inverse of x. Well, we know the definition of the inverse is just to interchange the x and the y variables. So that's basically what I'm going to be doing here, interchanging my x and y coordinates of specific points. That'll at least give me an idea of where to start, and then hopefully I can fill in the blanks in between. So let's start with example one. I'm going to be doing that by interchanging my two ordered pairs. So instead of negative four, negative two, my ordered pair is going to be negative two, negative four. So I go left two units down, one, two, three, four units. So this one gets interchanged with this right here. All right, next, negative 3, 0 gets interchanged to 0, negative 3. Negative 1, 1 gets interchanged to 1, negative 1. 0, 3 gets interchanged to 3, 0. And 4, 4, coincidentally, gets interchanged to 4, 4, so the exact same point here. So if I were to reflect these over the line y equals x, we should see that they do, in fact, match up. So we reflected our ordered pairs, but how does that fill in with the rest of the graph then? Well, basically, all I'm going to do is graph in between the points that I have connected. So I'm going to connect these two dots, connect those two ordered pairs, connect these two points, and connect those two points. And so this red graph, if I've done it correctly, should be the graph of f inverse of x. And we can always visually double check this. Does it look like if I were to fold my graph on this line of y equals x, it would match on both sides? Of course it does. So therefore, this red graph is the graph of my inverse function. Now, example one was really easy because they specified points for us. Example two might be a little bit more difficult because they don't have any points specified. So what I suggest for you to do is to define some own ordered pairs of the original function first and then to reflect those next. So if I were to define a point here at 4, 0, then my inverse would be graphed at 0, 4, which is here. Okay. If I pick another point here, intercepts are always easy to go by, I see that this is 0, negative 2. So my reflection would be negative 2, 0. Now, other points might be a little bit more difficult, but you can always approximate them, and that will always give us an approximate reflection point. So if I picked maybe this point right here, somewhere in between, I see that this point is approximately two and a half on the x direction, and maybe negative one and a half on the y direction. So let me go negative one and a half in the x direction, and two and a half in the y direction. And in fact, I should have graphed that the same color. Okay. Well, that's starting to fill in some blanks. Let me pick another point over here. So let me just pick here. Okay. I see that this is negative 3 in the x direction and maybe negative 2 and a half or maybe 2 and 3 fourths in the y direction. So now I go negative 2 and 3 fourths 
and down negative 3 units there. So switching my colors here so everything matches up. So, so I'm trying to get all my purple dots to be the inverse function and all of the red dots are my original function. Okay, and remember this is the graph that I'm trying to reflect over my line y equals x. And it should have the same basic shape. So my basic shape is going to have that same curvature as my original function. So this is the graph of my f inverse of x. We can see it has the same basic shape, except for it is reflected over the line y equals x. And so, therefore, we have graphed the inverse function without actually knowing what the original function was defined as. And all we did was interchange the coordinates for our x and y. And now you know how to sketch the graph without actually having f of x defined. And so, this finishes up inverse functions.